New guitar just came in. My dogs are very excited to see me open a box because they like when I open boxes. So I just received this guitar today from Drop D Guitars in Tennessee. They were the first sellers of this guitar that I saw put up pictures of it, which was really helpful in answering some of the questions a lot of people had about it, myself included. I had been eyeing this guitar for a while after it got announced because, surprise to no one, I'm a huge Alexi fanboy, and this guitar resembled one of his old Jacksons quite a bit. There was some confusion surrounding this guitar when it was announced because it has a non-recessed Floyd Rose. A lot of people thought this might be a typo in the advertising for this guitar, but I can confirm that this is not the case. Let's have a look. Okay, managed to get it out of the box with some assistance from my good buddy over here. He inspected it. So I don't want to bore you all too much here. My dog's adorable and all, but I don't think anybody needs to see me open a guitar case. But just go ahead and do a quick overview of everything that's in it. You got your standard stuff. Came with some strap locks. Some cheap strap that will probably never get used. And of course, trim bar, a couple tools. All the things you'd expect. All right. So here it is. It's got a few smudges on it, so I'm going to need to take some cloth and wipe this down real good, probably, but otherwise it's looking real nice. I'll get a better look at it here in a sec. A nice top to bottom on it. Looks pretty clean. It's got this kind of abrupt neck heel on it like a lot of the new RRs do. I'll pull out the other roads in a moment and I'll show you a comparison, but it's definitely there. I think that's just a Korean model thing. It's just how things are now. So first thing I'm doing here is checking all the tips because, you know, pointy guitars tend to get hit on things and you know how that goes. This thing is brand new though, so one small thing I did notice already though, not sure if you can see that, it's not actual damage in the paint so much as it looks like a small scuff, I might be able to buff that one out, but oh, this one's a little hard to focus on, here a couple tiny little white dots of paint. That's not glimmers of light right there. That's actually under the paint, like a couple tiny, tiny little white dots. But to be honest, it's not a huge deal to me. I, as long as it plays fine, it doesn't have any other like glaring issues. I don't care too much. Okay. One thing you'll notice here is this is ebony. It's a little lighter than my other guitars with ebony fretboards, probably because they haven't dyed it. Which, again, isn't really a problem to me. Kind of just a look thing. I mean, if it were a little darker, I wouldn't complain, but I don't really care too much. So here I'm taking a look at the pickup height a little bit because I'm noticing that this EMG is actually sitting pretty close to the strings. It's probably just something I can go over here and adjust the screws and bring it down to where I need to. But as you can see right there, I'm pressing a fret down and the string is nearly fretting out on the pickup. Not a huge deal. Um, looking at the Floyd Rose now, I was actually pretty interested in this because I've never really played a non-recessed Floyd Rose. 90% of my other guitars have regular Floyd Roses and I absolutely love them just because of the tuning stability alone. Uh, I think a lot of people had a concern that it might be kind of hard to do pulls on this Floyd Rose, but after messing around with it a little bit, I can confirm that it's not an issue at all. It actually doesn't really feel any different than my recessed Floyd Roses. The only thing is it feels like it's sitting a little high, but I can just go ahead and give the post a couple turns and get them down to where I need to be. But one thing I do want to do that I uh, think I've pointed out at some point in here is talk about the neck heel on this. Um, I've got my other Jacksons out, and I'll give them a quick comparison here in a moment. Alright, so I went ahead and got the guitar brought in here to my office, aka where guitars go to die, but we don't gotta talk about that. 
So what I wanted to show, this is my LTD Alexi. It's a black E from 2011, I think. So you can see the, uh, the neck heel on this is pretty smooth. Like, obviously, it's going to be different because, you know, Jackson, different brand. Um, upper fret access on this is pretty good. Not that I suspect it won't be in this guitar. The thing I wanted to point out, though, is you can see where your thumb, thumb, your thumb can slightly taper up and kind of grab this here. You do have a contour right here. Um, big difference, though, is... On some of the older Rhodes models, I noticed that this contour is a little more smooth. So I'll show you what I mean here in a sec. Let me grab this out. I actually don't touch this guitar too much anymore. Not that I have anything wrong with it. Um, it's just that it's not really set up in the tuning that I play in. So lately it's been just kind of uh, in the closet, aging a little bit in its case. Nothing wrong with that, I guess. Okay, so I've got them side by side with each other. Um, this one isn't actually taller, it's just leaning against this shelf a little differently over here. Um, but this is what I wanted to bring to attention. This one, it's definitely a more smooth angle. It's almost got like a, uh, a more similar taper to it that the Alexi has. Whereas this one kind of goes down and like kind of flips out a little here. Let me see if I can get both these guitars on their sides or side by side so I can actually see the difference in the neck angle. So right now I have both guitars kind of carefully placed together. I'm going to taper down the neck a little bit. So right there you can very much see what I mean. This guitar a lot smoother going down. This one however kind of flips out right there. When I first noticed this was a a thing actually was not even with this guitar, it's with my other Jackson, the um, Concept Series uh, with the two EMGs I ha also have over here. Um, I love that guitar as well, but the issue with that is the same thing. Um, well, not necessarily an issue per se, but it is still something to be noticed if you've been playing Rhodes guitars for a long time like I have. Um, it's one of the first things you'll feel, especially if you're a fan of these older, uh, made in Japan, RR24s. The difference is pretty quick to spot. So I have the concept series right here as well. So we'll go ahead and lay that out with it. I guess these are both the concept series, huh? Just this one's slightly different. So here's the RR24 MG, I think it was called. Here's the FRH, the new one. Uh, these both have that same neck profile to them. Um, I've actually gotten really used to playing this guitar recently, the RR24MG. Uh, one thing I really like about it is this sort of kind of tapered off finish for the neck. I like my necks unfinished, usually. Um, it's not too often that you see something like this. This is the first time I've seen anything like this without somebody actually hand sand sanding it down themselves. So I actually like this quite a bit. And you can, it's not an abrupt transition into here. You can feel my, or maybe you can see it. My finger does start, start to slow down as I hit right here where the gloss starts to take place. Um, that's not a huge deal for me. I could see it being a big deal for some players. Honestly, I, I, take my necks and clean them up pretty regularly. So I keep these things pretty well cleaned and ready to go. So I don't really have too much of an issue with them. This guitar though has been getting played for practice a lot recently. And admittedly, I haven't been keeping up with it, but that's, that's kind of on me, but let's get back to this thing. So for this next bit, I'm actually going to go ahead and bring this guitar back out of my office. Unfortunately, even with all the lights on in the space, it's not, well lit enough, so I brought it back out to my living room to get a better look.
here I'm kind of taking note of some of these things with the Floyd Rose that I'd mentioned earlier for the first time. Right there you can see I'm testing it by actually doing a little bit of pulling back on the Floyd Rose just to see how it how it feels and honestly, oh, there's my dog, my goodest boy. But honestly, I don't really see an issue with the non-recessed Floyd Rose on it. The more I uh I look at it and the more I play it, which you'll see some of here in a sec, the more I enjoy it. Just finish this up real quick. So here in a moment, I'll go ahead and get some clips of how this thing sounds, which if I had any guess, it's going to sound a lot like a guitar with EMGs. Although I have never used one of these EMG gain booths, so I'm kind of curious what that's going to be like. Um, I imagine it's going to be a bit of overkill. I do have replacement parts coming for this guitar. It's uh, not going to be like this for very long. This as far as the pickups and the electronics go. So I have an MM04 on the way and had this sitting around for a little while now waiting to be thrown in. So I noticed the pickup covers on it backwards here as well. There's a lot of glue on that from the seller. I need to clean that up and have it replaced on because right now it's not even firmly on there, but you can see where this is going. So I went ahead and recorded a small clip uh, direct into my Axe effects. This isn't like a going to be a mind-blowing recording or anything, just to kind of get an idea. The amp sim used in it is some variation of a 5150, and to be honest, I cannot remember what the cab was. I'll have a look at it in a moment, though, and I'll go ahead and post it in the comments. So I did have more recordings, but I'm learning the hard way that aligning uh, what I record in Reaper with what I've also recorded in video is an enormous pain in the butt. So I'll get back to you guys with other clips on this. Uh, I'll try and just get some direct in. I don't think you necessarily need to see my mug play in the guitar. So all in all, I would say that this is a great guitar. The only gripes I have about it is, you know, for it being the price point that it is, I don't feel like I should have little tiny imperfections like the uh, little bits of white paint that I pointed out earlier. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with it. It's not often that um, you see stainless steel frets on a production model from Jackson. Um, I know I've beat this dead horse a million times, as people very well know, but I myself tend to dig in pretty hard when I play, so I do like that I have something that I know is going to last me a bit. I mean, chances are I'm going to mod the crap out of this guitar anyways, just because big Alexi fanboy and all that great stuff. So I'm going to try my best to try and get that old Jackson sound out of it that everybody knows and loves from those first three Children of Bodom albums. But I think if anybody's actually looking at this guitar and looking to get it, I would, I would go ahead and recommend it. I think it's pretty good for the time being. If any other glaring issues appear, then... I'll be sure to point them out, but for the time being, I think I'm going to really enjoy this guitar. Thanks.